Hello everyone, in this video we are going to explore the basics of one of the most essential data analysis tools that is becoming widely used across several organizations and workspace environments. That tool is Python. It assists users from several different backgrounds by extending their ability to analyze data and make sense of it, which in turn generates valuable information. It can also be used to automate various tasks that saves time and energy with an increased sense of accuracy and reliability. Let's go over a few starters. What exactly is Python? Python is a programming language that is considerably easier to understand and learn as compared to other coding languages. It is a structure of logical statements known as code that the computer understands and is able to execute. We'll look over aspects such as syntax, applications, functions, and more, but firstly, a quick overview on the general idea on using programming as a data analysis tool. Different mediums of programming languages can be used to structure code and thus perform data analysis. Languages such as Java, C, C++, and other scripting languages remain popular choices in various fields of computer science. However, Python exceeds them in terms of user adaptability and its extensive capabilities to perform several analytical tasks that would be otherwise difficult to process. It is fairly significant to note that Python is not solely restricted to data analysis applications. The programming language carries the potential to visualize data, develop websites, games, and optimize search engines. In modern day, one of the most crucial applications of Python is artificial intelligence. This occurs through different modes of machine learning that can then build complex models alongside the use of popular libraries such as TensorFlow and PyTorch, which will be looked at further on in greater detail. Commands are the basis for any programming language tool. Without them, the user cannot execute even the most simplest of functions. There are a couple of standard built-in commands used almost conventionally in any Python coding scripts. These consist of the print command, arguably one of the most vital commands. It is used to display an output of objects, results of a function, or any other message the user has kept as string or text to be shown in an area known as the console. The input and output operations. While the output operation can be performed through the print function, the input operation is rather interesting. It allows the user to generate an interactive platform within the programming script itself by creating a dialog box to gather intel from several users. The input can then be output or printed once the code is complete and receives user-inscribed data. The if-else conditions. These codes are logically and mathematically structured by using operative notations to compare between variables. Customary conditions such as greater than, less than, equal to, and so on are commonly used to perform such actions. If is used whether or not a statement follows through. If it does, the command is executed. And if not, an else function is written to act as the next serving function to be executed when the if statement is rendered false. We'll look at examples later on. Loops, for or while. For loops are an iterative function. They go over a set, list, tuple, or dictionary to display a sequence of output and items that the user specifies. It can either be numerical or text. While loops differ, because they consist of a condition. While the condition is found true, the set of statements will be executed and the user will receive an output as long as the condition is being met. The else condition may also be added to act as the next serving function once the condition is no longer being satisfied in the loop. Functions. So far, we've gone through several varying processes. A quick reminder that a function is an existing block of code that executes when it is called on, such as the print command. Now going over some of the built-in libraries, the primary notion of using Python as a data analysis tool relies within the essence of the language's built-in libraries. These libraries contain predetermined functions that can be used to perform various tasks based on the specifics of what the user requires. They are groups of related code separated into different libraries based on their relative application. Some of these libraries are NumPy, which is used to execute mathematical functions and commands, Pandas, the most important library for data analysis, manipulation, and gaining of information, involves the use of arrays and other dimensional models such as data frames. Matplotlib and Seaborn, commonly found in engineering backgrounds and are used for data visualization purposes. TensorFlow, Keras, and PyTorch. While TensorFlow and PyTorch are widely used to conduct 
conduct machine learning. They assist in building models that can perform several data mining and analysis analysis tasks, as well as assist in applications of artificial intelligence. Keras, on the other hand, is used for deep learning, which is essentially a more complex form of machine learning. It is specific to neural networks and is denoted as deep due to the existence of several layers within one form of a machine learning model. SciPy. This is used for more scientific-specific commands and functions, such as statistics and optimization. Scrappy allows the user to gather and extract structured data from websites, a process known as web scrapping. SQL model. SQL, known as Structured Query Language, consists of a DML, Data Manipulation Language, and a DDL, Data Definition Language. This library allows Python to read structured data that is stored in an SQL database. Before moving on to some of Python's semantics, there are a few general concepts that are useful to remember. Variables in Python can take any label. They are used to store data and values that can be thus used in the relative analysis. For instance, a is equal to 1. The variable a is defined to carry the value of 1. The choice of variable tends to be relied on the user's discretion and ease of use. Operators. Operators are simple arithmetic commands, equal to, greater than, less than, where the equal to sign is generally used to assign the value to a specific variable. The other operations serve comparative purposes. Function. Pre-written statements of code that serve a stipulated purpose and can be called upon and used several times within a session. Prints. An example of a function that outputs the results of a function or a string onto the screen and into the console of the script. To further our discussion, we go back to the roots of programming. Remember that statements are sentences or lines of codes that are structured to perform an expected function and action, usually to generate results. The statement is not restricted to mere functionality, whereas it can also be used to simply identify a variable or define a block of codes. One other concept is the use of comments within the programming language. Comments are not understood by Python as a function and thus are not executed. Rather, they are ignored and are only intended to explain the in-depth applications or details of a written code. We've also previously mentioned the console. It is the area in the Python script in which the results of a code or a function execution is output, such as when the print command is called, the output resides in the console. Another significant aspect to note is the existence of error messages. Codes are not always written correctly or accurately. They must adhere to a certain syntax or programming grammar that without following it, they cannot function. When there exists a mistake in the code, Python outputs an error message in the form of a text that informs the user of the error, as well as the line in which it occurs. This, this makes it easier for the user to identify the mistake and rectify the code. Here we begin with the details and basics of Python programming. Being able to identify and apply the data types, syntax, and commands are the core aspects of any language. To start off, data can vary in its types, form, or even structure. Distinguishing the different types of data allows the programmer to insert the correct functions for the related commands. If a string value is used in a mathematical operation, an error would ensue. Let's go over them one at a time. String generally used for text and alphabetic symbols, integers, numerical values that cannot take the form of a decimal, hence are not fractionized. Float, to subside the restrictive rules of an integer value, float data types are for those numerical values that can have decimal places. Booleans, returns either a true or false value. If the operation conforms to the arithmetic rule, a true value is emitted and thus vice versa. Syntax is essentially the grammar of the programming language. The rules and guidelines that must be followed in order to ensure proper execution of a code that can be read by Python. Understanding this diminishes the chances of errors occurring or at the very least limits them. Usually, a string value is placed either within single or double quotation marks. Both are interpreted by Python and it is not a differentiating factor. Decimal points are marked by a period and are used to identify an integer from a float value. Boolean functions cannot are, and are incapable of outputting anything but a true or false value. 
whatever else will be deemed invalid and erroneous. When a function is called, it is invoked or rendered active by the use of parentheses, also known as rounded brackets. To execute the function, the required parameters are inserted within the parentheses and once identified by Python, the function is carried out and the results are output into the console. Going back to the notion on comments, the syntax to identify them is of two forms. A single line comment begins with a hashtag at the beginning of the comments, whereas a multi-line comment is recognized using triple double quotation marks usually placed above the first comments. Operating syntax follows the same mathematical rules that are applied in arithmetic form. By assuming that A and B are variables that take certain numerical values, a couple of basic comparative operations can include A is equal to B, which identifies the value in B to denominate the same value as A. Both variables will be exactly alike. A plus B, a simple summation or addition of the values of both variables, similarly wherein A minus B, A subtracts from the value of B, and in terms of products or multiplication, A multiplied by B, the asterisk which denotes multiplication serves the results of multiplying both the variables and hence we end up with A divided by B that divides both the variables. There are also various subsets of comparative operators aside from the most commonly used. They can be conjoined to compare the values of now different variables x and y, some of which are two equal signs, which exhibits true when x is exactly equal to y, the not equal indicated by a exclamation mark, and an equal sign that results in true when x is exactly not equal to y. The table also displays the true operations of the greater than, less than, greater than, or equal to, less than or equal to comparisons, where the left-hand argument in our example, x, must adhere to the mathematical logic when weighed against the right-handed argument, y. Syntax also allows us to distinguish between several different forms of data listing, collection, and storing techniques. These can be identified by the symbol of the range that the data exists within. Being able to recognize the differences between them is undeniably crucial to data analysis and will be useful when undergoing functions and commands under the NumPy and Pandas libraries. List tuples, sets, and dictionaries. Lists, they store multiple items of data within one single variable. They are built using square brackets, which is their identification marker. It is a form of data collection that is mutable and may tolerate the existence of duplicates. Usually, lists can be denoted as arrays, which can further down be used to extract data from specific locations within the list itself or a matrix built using several rows of a list or an array. Tuples. While also a form of data collection, these are separated using their use of parentheses or rounded brackets. Although tuples may contain repeating data values or duplicates, it is an immutable or non-changeable form to store data, meaning that alterations cannot take place once it has been created. Sets. A set is distinguished by its use of curly brackets, and though visually similar to a list, the items in this collection of data does not allow duplicates, whereas it is also unordered. This is quite significant. Due to the variability in the data's order, the values within a set cannot be extracted or indexed considering that a different value will be placed in that location every time the set is used. However, they are still changeable and new items can be added or deleted. Dictionaries. These are almost a source of labeling technique per se. Dictionaries present data in key value pairs, meaning that data are stored in collection of keys and every key stores several data values within it. While also marked using curly brackets, they are formed by first identifying a key and then storing its values after the placement of a colon as a form of separation. Various keys and values may exist, which plays to the effect of creating a dictionary. It is important to remember that these dictionaries are ordered, do not tolerate duplicates, and are changeable or mutable. Lastly, in our discussion, let's review a few of the basic commands used in Python, along with a couple of examples to make more sense of them. The print command holds a pair of parentheses next to it in order to invoke the function. Values may be printed either as the result of a function or a string identified by the user using quotation marks. 
It also outputs the values stored in a variable and various other forms of data types onto the computer screen and into the console. The input function allows the user to open a dialog box that is able to input data that is typed into it and is used for any upcoming functions or executions. Data that is input by several users is usually in the form of a string. The if-else conditions. Recalling that an if-else condition compares between combinations of values and variables. If the condition renders true, the function is executed. Otherwise, the condition stated under else is called upon. Over to the right, the example shows a simple process of how the function works. Variables a and b take up values of 233 respectively. The condition stated is formed using a comparative operator, which is the greater than sign. When b is greater than a, the print function is executed, and b is not greater than a is output. However, if the condition doesn't follow through, the print function under the else command is referred to. It is important to note that the indentation or, or space at the end of both the if and else condition is mandatory. If not taken into account, Python will release an error instead of following the command. The loops. For loops essentially follows the iterative sequence of either a list, tuple, set, or dictionary. For instance, the example shows a list of fruits. For every occurrence of a value within the list, the print function is called and carries those values as output function to be executed in terms of their sequence one by one. While loops. The concept is the same. But with the addition of a conditional factor, the loop follows as long as the condition is found true. Once it is no longer being met, the loop ends. An example of this is shown on the right. While i is less than 6, it prints those values that come under it. Python will execute this only until the number 5, that is, so that the condition remains true. We can now, without an argument of a doubt, determine that Python is an incredibly useful tool. It can serve in variating fields and areas of analysis due to its extensive capabilities and resources. That was all we had for today. A quick introduction to Python as a programming language and its applications in several environments. I hope that this video was of benefit to anyone who followed along, so thank you for listening and goodbye.